Hi guys! Welcome to my channel. This is Too Cute for Cancer. My name is Jody, and if you are new to my channel, yay! I'm so happy to have you. If you have been following me for a while, then hi! <laughs> it's me again. Um, just a really quick um, backstory so you understand where we're going with today's video. I have stage 4 um, metastatic triple negative breast cancer that is metastasized to my bones. Okay, <clears throat> that's just me in a nutshell. I've been, I've been battling cancer for 20 years. I have had triple negative diagnosed triple, um, stage 4. It's always been triple negative, but stage 4 um, for the last 9 years. Okay, so that is just a little about me. Now, <clears throat> today's topic. <laughs> it's, uh, we're going to talk about chemo-induced um, peripheral, I can't say that word, uh, neuropathy. All right, and a lot of people have neuropathy um, for many different reasons. However, um, chemo-induced um, neuropathy is a little bit different and is usually rapidly, it's a rapid onset, it doesn't happen over time, and it is caused by your chemotherapy. Now the chemo that normally um, is the culprit is Taxol and Alexitoxin. Those are the two, you can, it does happen with other um, chemos. However, these are two that usually you see it um, more often in. Um, and so what happens is you do your chemo and then all of a sudden you cannot feel your toes or you have sharp pains like needles going into your feet and then there's a severe burning sensation uh, down your heel and up your up your legs. And it's not pleasant. It can uh, vary from mild um, to severe. So it probably and usually sometimes like before they really had a lot of information on it um, they would just keep giving you the same chemo and make you suffer through it. However since time has gone and they've done more, they have more knowledge and stuff, and people are living a lot longer because, sadly to say, um, prior they would do all of the chemo and stuff, but people were dying sooner, they weren't living, so the side effects of um, the neuropathy were not that big of an issue for anybody to really study or, you know, care about. So now that people are living longer, yay, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a big deal. It affects the quality of life greatly, and um, it can be worse than the cancer uh, side effects at times. Okay, so um, the problem is um, there is no cure to... Um, chemo-induced neuropathy. You, there are some things that you can do to help with the pain. Uh, opiates is one of the top the top dogs. Uh, seizure medication, gabapentin, um, and antidepressants. And antidepressants, I'm not really sure exactly how they work, but just from what my doctor has said, it works on your brain to trick it into not feeling the nerve pain because it is it's it damages your central nervous system so um, that's the the theory between a, you know about the antidepressants so I don't know if it works because I haven't tried that yet but um, I would be willing to <laughs> for sure um, okay now, the thing is, okay, 
let's talk a little bit how it affects my life because this is my channel and it's all about me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. <laughs> um, for me, I was on Taxol. That was my very first chemo. And it was, I, it hit me probably about four weeks in and I was having pain in my feet. I thought my feet were going to sleep in the chemo chair. <laughs> so I would walk around with my pole and see if I could wake them up. Well, I didn't have any clue what neuropathy, I didn't know anything about it at that time. So that was frustrating. And finally the nurse said, um, asked me, do you have, do you have pain? Do you have burning? Do you have loss of balance? Do you have weakness in your legs? And I was like, yeah, I do. But I thought it was from the chemotherapy just making me weak and tired. And it obviously that it, that does contribute to it. But uh, basically, um, the neuropathy does all of that. So, yeah. So what happened was they asked me about it. They said, here's some pain medicine. Um, go home. You know, Don't worry about it. You know what happens with chemotherapy? Nothing we can do about it. So I'm like, okay. Well, then I continued with the same, um, the same chemo. Well, nowadays, what happens, now what would happen, and if it's not happening, you can speak up and request it, um, that you're, you're getting, you're having neuropathy symptoms, the sooner the better, speak up and say, um, I'd like to change chemotherapies. You know, change to a different uh, brand, different type, different, um, I know, it may not stop the neuropathy right away. It may continue, but um, it it could help. So that is one thing, speak up. Now the thing is, okay, so they give you, um, they give you chemotherapy to kill the cancer, but it's actually rat poisoning going into your body and it kills a lot more than just the cancer. So while you are still alive and thankful for it, um, you know, you just have to be prepared for some of the repercussions and know how to deal with it. So with neuropathy, what they do is they do rehabilitation exercises and um, it's not like, like exercises like running on the treadmill or anything like that. It's stretching, it's working on your core because the rest of your body can be strengthened so um, your, it supports the nerves, the, you know, the damaged areas. So that's the theory with the uh, rehabilitation exercises. And I can say definitely it helps a lot. Um, for years, like pretty much constantly, um, my husband was doing leg stretches on me and I, different leg stretches, different exercises. And it, I mean, it helped a lot with the pain for sure. So anyway, um, fact last night I was up all night doing exercises and trying to, uh, conquer some of the pain. So anyway, now, um, is there a cure? No, there's no cure that can be managed, but there's no cure. Um, vitamin E capsules. I have been reading all over the place about vitamin E capsules and some other stuff, supplements and natural, um, natural supplements that people swear help. So, I would definitely check that out. I would research. I would try anything that could help. I mean, it can't hurt, right? <laughs> so, uh, let's see. So, for me, my biggest struggle is 
um, walking for too long, my um, my feet go numb, and sometimes I look down. And I don't know if they're there. <laughs> I think that's kind of scary. Um, if I sit too long, um, it's really bad. Like we've been in a, a road trip, so I've been sitting a long time, and that has just absolutely killed killed uh, me. Neuropathy, the, my legs, my my I get shooting pains, uh, needles burning. Um, and I also get it in my spine. Um, my lower back will go numb, which is kind of weird. It's like when your leg goes numb, my lower back kind of goes numb and then it wakes up with a uh, burning sensation. Um, yeah, it's, it's not fun. I have, mo I was diagnosed with moderate to severe, so I'm really grateful that I... I'm not just in the severe <laughs> category. So now I'm going to put a positive spin on this because this was quite a depressing subject. Um, the good news is, yes, we are alive. The second good news, there's medication that can help handle it. Um, the That's it for good news. <laughs> I don't know. And you get you do get used to and how to handle it over time. So it's not as devastating as it seems in the beginning. So that is really good news. All right. Um, these are the tips and takeaways that I think have helped me and I think would help me more if I did them more. But maybe you guys are, would be better at this. Um, Tell people about your pain, about neuropathy, explain it to them, educate them. Because when you, like for example, um, I would go to Disneyland with the family and I would want to keep up with them and walk and do the normal things, but I couldn't. It just was, it was killing me. So I, instead of saying, I, it just explaining why, I couldn't do it, I would just stay home and let everybody go. Well, um, after a while, my husband got me a wheelchair and um, that helped solve part of that problem. <laughs> but then sitting in the wheelchair too long hurts the neuropathy in my back and my, my spine. So there's that. But there, if you speak up, people can help you is what I'm saying. And also, if you are trying to keep up and you don't feel like you can and people don't know what's wrong with you and you don't tell them, then they're going to think that you either don't want to be with them or do things with them or they're going to think that you're lazy or that that you're dying. <laughs> you know, it's they, they'll misdiagnose you, let me just say. So what I'm saying is, if you speak up, if you tell people what's going on, you can educate them. And education is always good at, at all different levels. And it will not only help you, you know, to be able to manage and have support, but it'll also help them to understand. So if it ever happens to them, God forbid, or if they run into a spouse, a sibling, a friend that is dealing with it, they'll know what to do. So that's my tips and takeaway for today. Now, um, that is it for today. I am going to go back and get in the car for another 13 hours and get home. But I just wanted to make sure that the video went up in time. So I will bid you adieu. Oh, and. If you are not following my channel and you would love to support me and it is so easy to do, just hit that subscribe button and set that bell to notifications so you don't miss anything good. We've had a lot of fun stuff on my channel, so go back and look at some of this stuff and see if you like it. Don't hit the subscribe button until you know that you like it. Because you know what's really a biggest bummer is I'll see something, I'll think, oh, that's that's cool. Hit the subscribe button. Then all of a sudden I got all these people I'm following, and I don't know why I'm following them. I'm like, hmm. So make sure you watch the videos. Make sure that you want to subscribe, and then hit that hit that subscribe button. And I will see you on Sunday at 
too cute for cancer. Bye.